Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 26th of June 2011. 102 years ago this day, the Science Museum of London opened its doors for the first time. If you've never been to the Science Museum and uh, find yourself in London, it's well worth the trip. It's also free. Speaking of free, we seem to be free of major flares. In the last 24 hours we've only had a few small bee flares and nothing more. We have seen further decay in the sunspot regions. Region 1236 is right on the west limb and you can only see the one large spot. Region 1241 looks fairly stable, but region 1240 just disappeared overnight. This is particularly interesting. An active region even of the size of 1240 has a huge amount of energy in it. So where did all that energy go? It certainly didn't produce a flare. The only answer can be that the region was subducted back underneath the photosphere and is still there at who knows what depth, perhaps recharging for another emergence sometime later. So we should keep an eye on this particular longitude and latitude and see whether a new region does emerge subsequently here. In the Sunspot and Magnetic movies, I would like you to particularly concentrate on the decline of region 1240 in the southwest. Initially you can see there are some spots there, by the end of it it's decayed away to nothing. In the Magnetic movie you can see that the regions in the eastern hemisphere of the Sun are all very weak and diffuse which means they are remnants of old regions that have decayed away. There is no sign of any emergence of new regions in that whole area. In the transition region there are a lot of prominences and filaments to keep an eye on. So I'm going to show a couple of them in detail to you. First the one on the northeast limb, the one I talked about yesterday. Remember I hold a hypothesis that a filament that is rising and becoming very dynamic will erupt? Well that was the theory behind my prediction yesterday but it hasn't erupted as yet. In fact, it's setting faster than it's going to erupt. If it doesn't erupt, that's a counterexample to the theory. But rather than becoming a rule, it becomes a guideline in that uh, a uh, region is more likely to erupt when it's doing that, not necessarily will erupt. Meanwhile, the prominence in the northeast looks fairly stable for a while, but then starts to grow, and by the end of the sequence looks as though it's in the process of erupting. So this would be an example of something that is compatible with our hypothesis. In the coronal movie, I'd like you to particularly concentrate on the east limb. You can see by the end of this sequence that there are two bright regions either on or just behind the east limb coming over. However, they don't look all that dynamic and they don't look all that strong, so, so neither of them are going to be major regions. I was particularly struck by the beautiful and dynamic loops from region 1236 as it went over the west limb. So I made this short movie illustrating some of the changes in the region. Note how the loops evolve. Small loops brighten and then rise slowly. You can see filamentary structures in some of the larger loops. It is such magnetic interactions that cause flares. So these are of particular interest to us. Here is a movie combining the C2 and C3 instruments from the Zoho coronagraphs. There isn't a great deal going on. If you look carefully in the southeast in that bright streamer, you might be able to see a CME early in the sequence. That was probably caused by that filament eruption that I showed you yesterday. Otherwise, things have been very quiet on the coronal mass ejection front as well. Here we can see the ACE data for the last 24 hours. The temperature, shown in green at the bottom, doesn't seem to have changed very much. Solar wind speed in yellow has dropped significantly, and the density is about where it was before. So the high speed solar wind stream seems to have swept past us now, and the low speed solar wind stream seems to be replacing it. NOAA 15 shows us that the auroral zone is relatively quiet and the KP index is varying between 1 and 3. So in summary then, the sunspot number has dropped to 47, the X-ray background remains at B2, radio sun intensity is at 96 solar flux units, solar wind speed has dropped to 525 kilometers per second with a density of just over 1 proton per cubic centimeter and the KP index is rated as quiet. So my short term forecast is that C flares are possible, but M and X flares are very unlikely. The sunspot number will likely go lower. Coronal mass ejections are possible, but the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm are very low. The longer term prospects of high activity are, are quite uh, poor in that we are losing our major regions over the west limb of the sun and the new ones coming onto the disk are relatively faint and, and diffuse. So I'm not seeing very much opportunity for new flares until new regions start to emerge. And nobody is very good at predicting when that will happen. 
in the description box below I have got some links to some useful NASA and NOAA sites. If you want to see earlier editions of The Sun Today or some of my global warming videos, go to my channel, they're all listed there. To go back and see what the sun looked like uh, one, or two or three rotations ago, you should go to my Sun Today videos, the 30th of May for one rotation, the 3rd of May for two rotations, and the Sun Today for the 6th of April for three rotations. You'll see that the sun was very different on those days than it is now. The featured global warming video for today discusses the lack of proof of anthropogenic global warming. So that's all for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.